Southern blight is one of those diseases that can cause dramatic symptoms in the field. This is a Kikuyu grass fairway in Southern California that uh, shows some pretty serious symptoms of Southern blight. What's nice about this disease is that you can pretty much diagnose it in the field if you catch the uh, organism in the right uh, stage of development. As you can see, there's some white spheres, very small, they're about a millimeter in diameter, and if you pick around the edge of the in affected area, you should be able to see the sclerotia. However, when they start to mature, they turn brown, and here you see it's more difficult to see the sclerotia, although there's some in there, and uh, I'll just pick one up with my finger just in a second here, and you'll be able to see uh, what it looks like. And then here's some more that are pretty easy to see in a, in a similar type of a situation where there's quite a few sclerotia uh, formed down the base at the base of the plants. Well, here we are back in the lab. We brought a small sample back just to take a, take a look at it, uh, get a little focus on there. And you can see there's some small spheres. They're light colored here. They're not fully developed yet, but they'll develop uh, over time. And we'll take a look at them under the dissecting microscope. This is one of those diseases that doesn't require uh, a uh, hand lens or anything other than the naked eye to uh, get a look at it. And we'll also take a look at the, the hyphae that are characteristic of uh, this particular fungus, which is southern blight. Here we see the sclerotia under a dissecting microscope, and they're very easy to see when they're developing in white uh, colored. But if you look a little further down, you can see there's a brown sclerotium uh, that is pretty much the same color as the organic matter in the upper thatch area of the, uh, of the turf. So you can really have a hard time finding these things in the field once they're mature. So you, you seldom will see the white ones. Let's take this one over to uh, a flat uh, area and we're going to cut it in half and take a look at the uh, structures of the scrotia itself to show why these are such great uh, resistant uh, structures that allow the uh, fungus to survive uh, dry conditions and also fungicides. Uh, there's an outer uh, rind or the brown area that uh, is the most durable part in thick-walled area of the sclerotium, and actually after it germinates, that rind will be left behind. Uh, there's a thin layer between the rind and the center part uh, of the white area that's called the cortex, and that center white area is called the medulla of the sclerotium. Now let's take a little look at a time sequence on how these sclerotia develop uh, over the course of about six days, where they develop from white to tan uh, to a little bit more tan, and then finally into that uh, sort of a brownish uh, soil kind of a colored look that's very difficult to see. Now let's take a piece of mycelium and see what the hyphae look like. And here is a piece of uh, mycelium and they have a very characteristic clamp connection that is typical for uh, many of the fungi in the basidiomycete group of fungi. So it's just a uh, typical of a uh, basidiomycete that includes uh, the fairy ring and, uh, and like organisms, and even rhizoctonia is in that group, but it does not make these clamp connections. Refer to the links associated with this update for additional information on southern blight.